Welcome all. So today I am going to start the topic of ASP.NET Core Blizzard. So for this there are a few prerequisite and it will be nice to let you all know that you know uh, it this video is coinciding with the release of the .NET Core, ASP.NET Core and the .NET Core 3 stable version, the first uh, release. Um, and in the Microsoft.NET conference in the US, you know, so it is a nice coincidence that I am starting this new series on Blizzard. All right, so as usual, it is built on a Microsoft documentation, but we'll do some hands-on coding today and we'll build on our previous lecture on introduction. So if you have not viewed that introduction video, please go through it and we'll extend that video in code. So here we go. So you have to install the latest .NET Core 3 SDK release and you have to install the Blazor template by running this following command. Now this command is in the Microsoft document which I have put in the description of this video. Okay, so just bring up any Windows command prompt and issue this command. And click on enter and you'll get this uh, template ready and loaded for you and make sure that you have installed the latest visual studio version which can be uh, made uh, available i mean downloaded and installed from this https colon front slash front slash visual studio.com slash vs slash okay so i have got visual studio 2019 community edition and updated it to version 16.3 that has the required SDK already installed. So enough of theory. Now let's flip over to the Visual Studio. Okay. So I have now flipped over to Visual Studio and I will click on File, New, Project. And you can see that Blazor app is already highlighted in my case. So I will click on Next. I can give it a uh, name like Blazor app one by default it was there but I can name it get started whatever name that you'd like get started Blazor okay and then just change the location a little bit Select this folder, click on create and it will create the project for you. Here on this create a new Blazor app, I have got Blazor server app as well as Blazor web app assembly app. So I will go with the default Blazor server app, which is a project template for creating a Blazor server app that runs server side inside an ASP.NET Core app. Right, so I will click on I will just untick this, configure for HTTPS and click on create and it will create the project. So now the project is created and I will just run the application to show you the features of this web app, Blazor web app. Now the browser has loaded the project and you can see a few tabs on the left hand side get started blazer that is the project name home welcome to your new app and there is a counter if you click it will click on it will uh, increment every time you click it okay and on clicking fetch data it will give you some imaginary temperature in degree centigrade and it's uh, corresponding conversion to fahrenheit with a summary of scorching bracing depending upon the temperature so now let's do some more things. Now I have opened the project um, in Visual Studio Solution Explorer and you can see the project structure. It's a, there's a data folder which has got two files, two uh, classes, weatherforecast.cs and weatherforecastservice.cs but we'll be more interested in these pages folder which has got index.razor pages, counter.razor and Pitch data dot reason. So let's see one by one because 
if you have gone through my first lecture on introduction, that is very important as a um, foundation for this particular lecture because that gives you some idea about blazer components. So blazer components are reusable, um, you can say classes, which has got um, the service side as well as client side code written into it. And uh, you know, um, they are all reusable, they can be nested. So please go through that video before coming back here. Now, in this counter.razor page, so at page directive, it is pointing to slash counter. So when we saw that, you know, um, if we run this application, you will see that this will be localhost slash counter. If I click on, I will show it to you again. Now you can see this is localhost slash port localhost colon port slash the counter. So that is what this page directive at counter gives. And this click me button as you have seen that it is incrementing the counter. Now this is doing it without a page refresh. Remember incrementing a counter in a web page normally requires writing JavaScript. For, for Razor components, it provides a better approach using C sharp to do this incrementing. So we'll go to the code and then see what happens here. Now a request for front slash counter in the browser as specified by the at, at page directive causes the counter component to render its content. Components render into an in-memory representation of the render tree that can then be used to update the UI in a flexible and efficient way. So each time the click me button is fired, is selected, the on click event, see this is the on click event, on click event is fired and the increment counter method is called because on click it is calling the increment count method and the current count is incremented the component is rendered again. So that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now the runtime compares the new content to the previous content and only applies the changed content to the document model or document object model DOM. So add a component to another component using HTML syntax. Now we can, what we can do, we can add this counter, which is a component to the index view or index.razor. This is the one. So we can add this counter as a, you know, um, reusable component to index. And how we do that? We can simply write here, just like an HTML tag. So you can see that counter is available. So you can just, just like that. And I can save this. Okay. Now I have saved and refreshed the web page and you see this counter is available to the home page. This is the home page. Okay. So if I click on click me, the counter increments. But if I come back to counter, the current count resets to zero. And if you click it repeatedly, it will increment by one. But if you come back to home, again, the counter resets to zero. So that is the use of this um, blazer component. Now component parameters are specified using attributes or child content, which allows you to set properties on the child component. To add a parameter to the counter component, now we'll update the components at code block. Okay, so if we come back to counter.razor or counter component, we can do a bit of changes and see how it looks like. So now let me make this as private. Private int current count equals zero. And I'll put a parameter attribute and a public property. So see, the intelligence is also available with the, this razor syntax. So that's great, isn't it? And uh, I can even create the public property like prop tab tab and this will be increment amount. So what I am trying to do is to 
show you that I can change the increment amount to anything that I would like to. Initially, I would like to keep it at one. All right, so this also can be made a private, private void increment count and current count to the current count initial value, which was zero, I can add the increment count. So incre sorry, increment amount, right? And then back in the index component, index.razor, what I can do that, you know, instead of um, closing the tab, counter tab over counter tag at that point, I can introduce an increment amount, see, increment amount equals, say, 10. Okay, counter increment amount 10. And rest of the things are all the same. And then run this application. So now you can see that every time I click on click me, it count uh, increments by 10 rather than 1. So that's quite cool, eh? So now what we conclude from here is that the in index component has its own counter that increments by 10 each time. The click me button is selected. The counter component at counter continues to increment by 1. If you look into this counter co component again, so let me run it one last time. So count, count, counter component just increment by 1, whereas the home counter should increment by 10 each time. So in today's lecture, we have seen that, you know, how you can get started with the Blazor component. You need .NET Core 3 SDK, which is pretty much available with the latest version of Visual Studio 2019, which is the community version for, which is free version with 16.30. Uh, and you need to update your uh, um, Blazor template with the template command, which is there on the slide. And we have seen how the one component is nesting another component. So that's the end of today's lecture.